Well, hello everyone. My name is Mike Scan. Uh, I want to welcome you to a brand new um, uh, broadcast that we're doing. We're calling it um, "Epic of the Epic Life," the Epic Life, and uh, I want to talk about certain issues that we tend to um, that that are part of who we are. Maybe some of it's the disciplines of who we are as as believers and followers of Messiah, and hopefully caught up catch you guys into some red flags that man, tend to happen to us as Christians. And the ultimate goal, man, obviously, is to live out the life that you were created to live. This is the vision of Epic Life. It's our purpose that we know and we feel like that that every person um, is called to live a particular life and follower of Messiah. And that can be complicated. We live in a world of information and we live in a world where uh, man, if you look hard enough, whatever you're thinking or whatever you're hearing, um, even biblically being challenged, um, you can pretty much look up in the web, uh, you know, on, on online and find anything that you believe with, and there'll be someone on there to agree with you. The problem with that is even if it's false, even if it's not true. And so I want to curtail some of those. I want to give some warnings. I want to encourage you um, in some of these things. And so we're calling it The Epic Life. Uh, obviously it's here in our YouTube channel. And today I want to just kind of uh, maybe stir us up a little bit in the area of uh, of prayer. And I am seeing a greater number of people um, and specifically within the confines of our community where people are probably the number one thing that they are foregoing and that is prayer. Um, we're not spending time um, in prayer. And I think the reason for that is, is we're not putting, we don't understand or we're deliberately not putting the um, energy forward to prayer because we don't understand its value. We don't understand um, its meaning. For some, it's as simple as they don't, you may not know how to pray. You may not um, feel like prayer is super important, or maybe you do know it's important, but what has happened is that there are things and events that have come into your life and really made prayer a non-priority. That is what the enemy does. The enemy wants to circumvent um, that area of your life. Why is that? Well, let's look at a military, um, a military viewpoint um, when it comes to combat. Uh, in a combat situation, the first thing that you want to do is disrupt two things. Number one, the supply chain of your enemy. So wherever they're getting their food, their ammunition, their water. All of that has to be disrupted. Why? Because if you disrupt those things, then what you have is a military or a um, a military power that has nothing. They don't have food, so the 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 troops are going to go hungry. They're going to lose morale. They don't have weapons, and so they don't have ammunition. And you get the ammunition, obviously, then there's they're not a threat to you anymore. So we need to look at this. But the other part, the other illustration, and the other thing that you want to take authority over or that you want to get and disrupt within the within combat is communication. If you can disrupt their communication, here's what happens. You lose, they lose the ability to communicate with the commanding officer. And so they don't know what the plan is. If you disrupt the communication, you are able to take away... Um, the orders or the plans, you will lose what the enemy is doing because you have scouts that are fort observers. They are over there and they're looking for the enemy. They're monitoring the movement of the enemy and they communicate those things back to headquarters. Headquarters, therefore, send those things to you so that you or your, your platoon or your battery or your, they know where the enemy's at. But if you disrupt that, now you've you, you've lost sight of the enemy, and they can get you. You don't know what you're supposed to do. Maybe you're in help, and you need help to um, 
from the headquarters. Maybe you need artillery. Maybe you need Air Force to fly over and drop some bombs and, and, and wreak some havoc on an enemy that you're outnumbered by. Well, you need to be able to communicate those things back to headquarters or back to uh, base. This is, the, this is the plan of the enemy. The enemy wants to disrupt communication. Prayer is that communication. And when you're not in prayer and you're not spending time hearing from your father in heaven, then the enemy can come in and you don't know his plans. You don't, you know, it may be that when you spend time in prayer, here's some examples. I've heard this time and time again, when it comes to prayer, prayer is so powerful that you may have, you may be going this direction. Say, I've heard a story one time, the awesome story of a gentleman that got up, he didn't spend time or he spent time in prayer and he was worshiping and praying. And so he was, he had ears to hear and he gets in this truck and he's headed off to an event. And in route to the vent, he sensed in his spirit that he needed to take a different route. And so he made the route. He turned, he exited, and he went a different direction. Well, he found out later that there was a major accident that was up ahead of him uh, on the same highway that he was on. And he not only diverted from that accident, so it saved him time probably, but also it may have been him that was involved in that accident had he continued down um, that road. Having discernment and having the ability to be plugged in into your power source is absolutely essential when it comes to living a life that God has called you to live, living the epic life. You need to grasp a hold of this, that the power of prayer is absolutely essential. And without prayer, you are missing out on the orders that God has for you. You're missing out on deliverance and freedom and dealing with the issues of this life. See, Jesus, Yeshua, was known for pulling back, pulling away from um, the crowd, pulling away from everybody to pray. And this is why he's able to say that I only say what my father tells me to say, and I only do what my father is telling me to do. You see, that should be our motivation, that we say what the father says, that we do what the father does. But if that communication is severed, and there's no prayer life, there's no time spending with your heavenly father, you aren't going to know what he says. You aren't going to know what you are to do. Prayer is important to the life of a believer. And disconnected from that, you're in trouble. And you're in trouble because you will be led astray. You will be told, you will hear things or whatever. Jesus said this. He said, my sheep hear my voice. And a stranger's voice, they will not follow. So whose voice are you listening to? Whose voice are you listening to? Are you listening to your voice? Your opinion? Maybe you're listening to public opinion. Who are you listening to? It's so important to understand that there is a father in heaven through the power of the Holy Spirit that will speak to you. You don't have to doubt whether or not God loves you. He will tell you if you'll listen. But what happens is we get sidelined. And the enemy throws in these distractions, these things that for all intensive purposes, many times they are good. They're not always bad. Some of the events that happen that come into your life that get distracted, uh, they're not bad, but we live in a world filled with distractions, filled with them. I'm constantly reminding me, uh, uh, being reminded of how many things can be a distraction in our life. It could be music. You're listening to the radio and you kind of get into the music, man, and you get distracted from spending time in prayer. It could be a good book, right? Maybe not scriptures, right? It may be not, not, not the word of God, but it may be other things. It may be movies, maybe social media, that you get trapped into social media. Matter of fact, I want to tell you this. If social media is a big issue for you, you you're, you're constantly on it, I want to challenge you, man. Fast from it. Get away from it. Take some time away from it. Um, it may be social events. It may be you're, you get caught up in a lot of social events, and you don't know how to tell people no. Say, hey, man, I don't have time for that. I need to pray. And you don't have to tell me you need to pray, but you need to spend that time in prayer first. It may be sleeping. I know a lot of people, man, that they 
they protect their sleep more than they protect prayer. So they won't stay up later at night and spend time with the Lord because they had a busy day or they won't get up early in the morning and spend time in prayer. So the question then is, the challenge is, if you're missing out, if you're not hearing from the Father, if you're doing a life that some seems to be very busy culturally, I mean, you're out in the world, you're doing stuff, maybe it's sports, right? Uh, family events, a social events, you're doing all of these things and you're so busy, but then you look back or you come to you come to Sabbath service and then all of a sudden you're hearing the pastor preach and you're like, man, I, I, I haven't prayed today. I haven't read the word today or this week. Man, I want, I want you, I want to check yourself. I want you to get back and wait a minute. Something's missing. At Epic Life, here, here's what I want you to know. Here's, here's the challenge. Is that our church, our priority has to be prayer. As a believer in Christ, as a follower of Messiah, you have to make prayer a priority. It can't be something that's second. And if you're living a Christian life and prayer has not been a priority, you're on very dangerous ground, believer. You're on very dangerous ground. As a body of Mashiach, as a community, one of many, we want to make prayer a priority. So what we have done is we've done two things to, to really illustrate this for our community, for our church. Number one is we, want, we, 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 we gather on Wednesday night. And we have actually made it later because I've spoken to so many of you who said, man, and you, you know who you are. You said, Mike, if prayer was later in the evening, like around seven, I would come. I would make time for it. But I get up too early. And guess what? You've never been to prayer. You've never come. Oh, Pastor Mike, you're, 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 uh, you're not being very loving here. And, and I, I want to be loving. I want you to hear my heart. But we strategically made the time at 7, 7, 8, uh, 7 p.m., to eight o'clock, an hour, once a week, to gather together as believers to pray, to pray for our community, to pray for the leadership of Epic Life Church and the leadership of others, to pray for those who are lost, to pray for those who maybe in our family or friends or community that we know do not have a relationship with Messiah. We made it specifically a special time to gather with others so that we can pray. It's led currently by uh, Pastor Dustin, and he takes time from his work, he leaves, he, and from his family, and he comes Wednesday night to pray. And I was very disappointed to hear last Wednesday night, not one person showed up. Not one person attended. And I know we all have a busy schedule. And I know you'll say, well, Pastor Mike, I don't, I, and Pastor Mike, I've got this, and I've got that. But let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Prayer is a priority. And we're gathering together with other believers to pray, to spend time with them. And I know the excuses. I know the reasons. Look, we have busy schedules, right? We all have busy schedules. We all have things that are priority. But man, God will bless you taking time from your schedule and giving it over to him. Matter of fact, Jesus said it this way. He said, can you not tarry? One hour. He had laid with the. He had laid uh, set the prophets in a certain area, and he said, "Man, you stay here and keep watch, pray." And then he moved down the road and he went and prayed. And when he came back, what did he find? He found the disciples asleep. He found the disciples asleep, and he stirs them up and he rebukes them by telling them and asking, them, "Can you not even pray an hour?" The Bible tells us that we're to pray without ceasing. I mean, prayer needs to be that important to us that we're constantly reminded to pray. When a brother or a sister says, hey, would you be praying for me? Just don't say yes. Don't say, oh, yeah, I'll be praying for you. No. Grab that brother, grab that sister by the hand and begin to pray for them. The only way that we get to take ground from the enemy is in prayer. It's where we do spiritual battle. It's where we get filled up. It's where we get encouraged. It's where we get the orders from the Most High, the Captain of the Host, Yeshua Messiah. That's where our orders come from. And I want to challenge you to spend time in prayer. Gather with us on Wednesday nights. It's for one hour. One hour. Can you not tarry one hour to spend with 
uh, like-minded followers to pray. We're going to worship. We're going to sing some music and we're going to worship and we're going to pray. The second thing that we have done is that every Shabbat, we spend time in prayer. We want to coat the church with prayer. We want to coat our service with prayer so that people that come into the gathering that day may be wrestling with stuff. They may not even have a relationship with Messiah. And so we come together so that the Holy Spirit will fall. Let me tell you something. God never shows up to an unprepared place. Never. Think about it like this. We're fixing to celebrate Shavuot, Pentecost, coming up here in just two weeks. How amazing is it that when that happened, Yeshua told the disciples in Acts chapter 1, he says, man, I want you to stay in Jerusalem and go and pray. And they went and they spent time in prayer. And it says when they were all in one accord, that's they were all in agreement. They were all in this together. The Bible says that the Holy Spirit fell. They were prepared. They were all in one accord. We need you to join with the community and pray and pray. And don't just pray in those two events, man. Make prayer a priority in your life. It may be that you need to wake up just a little bit earlier, just a little bit earlier. Maybe, and maybe you're new to this whole prayer thing. Say, Mike, I'm not really sure about prayer, but man, I want to challenge you. Make prayer a priority. Maybe just start with 10 minutes in the morning. Every morning, get up 10 minutes early, grab your coffee, sit down and pray. Spend time praying for your children. Spend time praying for this nation. We need to be praying for Israel right now. They are literally under attack. Rockets are being fired against Jerusalem right now. As you and I are talking, there is a battle going on in Jerusalem. And we need to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. We need to pray for their protection. There are uh, missiles, spiritual missiles, right, being fired at your loved ones, your family, your friends, your leadership of this community. And we need your prayers. We covet your prayers. We are called to take ground. We are not called to huddle up. And uh, I want to challenge you, if you have not made prayer, or maybe you slipped in your prayer time, I want to ask you, I want I want you to commit, right, to praying over the next 21 days. Pray for the, why 21 days, Pastor White? Well, it takes roughly 21 days to begin a new habit, right? So spend time praying, spend time praying, spend time talking to the Lord, spend time just, you know, people go, you know, I don't know how to pray. Look, prayer is simply just communicating to the Father and you're a believer. He loves you. All you have to do is talk to him just as you would talk to a friend. When you know that there's a need in another friend and, and you're, you're, you're praying for that friend, simply just talk to the Father. Father, I pray. I pray for, for Bob. And I ask, Father, that you would heal Bob of his whatever. Lord, I pray for the leadership team. And I ask that you would minister to them and fill them so that they can lead us. I pray for our government and those that are in the White House and in uh, positions of authority, Lord, that they would come to know Yeshua as Lord of their life. That, that their decisions and their choices would be directed by your word, Father. See, we need intercession. We need you to begin to intercede. And so right now, if you're watching this video and you've made it this far into the video, I want to challenge you, man. Would you begin to pray? Even right now for five or 10 minutes, just pause this video and go and pray and spend time with your Father. Because he's waiting on you. And then for those who are part of Epic Life Church, man, make it appointment. Make, write it down in your calendar. Say, man, I'm going to be there. I'm going to be there on, on, on Wednesday night at 7 o'clock from 7 to 8. That is, that is sacred time. Just like the Shabbat is our sacred time to gather before the Father, we're going to guard Wednesday night as a time of prayer in our community and for our community. And then... Sabbath, on Sabbath mornings, um, in my office, we gather um, around 930 to pray for our community, to pray for what he's going to do that day. And I want you to join us. I want you to be a part of that. I want you to uh, make it a priority. Everyone's invited to that. We'll have the security door open, allowing you to come in and pray. And then once prayer is over with, we shut that commute, that that door so no one can get back there once we start praying. And we want you to join us. We want you to make this a priority and begin to pray for your community, pray for your loved ones, pray for your leadership, pray for the leadership of our country, the leadership of our church, maybe your city, but let's make prayer a priority. 
And this is the epic life. We're called to live an epic life. And that means making prayer a priority. All right. I love you guys. Um, let me pray for you right now and for whoever's going to be watching this. Father, right now, in the name of Yeshua, I just lift up every person that may be watching this video right now or later in the future. Lord, I pray that you would put a passion for prayer in their spirit right now in the name of Yeshua. Lord, we lift up our Wednesday night prayer group, and Lord, we ask that you would draw people in, Lord God, to be a part of that and, and to gather, Lord, and to and to minister to one another, but more importantly, to minister to you and pray to you and, and, and get the mark orders that we need. Lord, I lift up um, our prayer ministry, uh, our prayer team that's out there that prays over our communication cards every every week. Lord, I pray that you would continue to challenge them to speak your word and to speak life over all of these prayer requests. And Lord, I pray for those who may not know you, Father. I pray, Lord God, that you would draw them in from the north, south, east, and west. I pray, Lord God, that you would convict their heart, Lord, challenge them of their sin, Father, in the name of Yeshua, that they would repent and come back to you and be the men and women that you have created for them to be. And Lord, we pray pray for our community, that this community would be healthy, Father, that, Lord God, that we would always point people to the kingdom, Lord God, to be the men and women that you have called us to be. We love you, Messiah. We love you so much, and we say and ask these things in the mighty name of Yeshua. Amen and amen. God bless you. We'll see you next time.